Good morning. Happy Sabbath, Margate. How is everyone doing this morning? It's good to see everyone here. I'm asking you all to listen to the following announcements. Okay, today we will continue our service after Divine Hour at 5. We will have our Bible class at 5 and then Vespers at 7.20 because sun sets today at 7.42. So Vespers is at 7.20 and sunset will be at 7.42. So keep that in mind. We will still be continuing our Holy Ghost wake-up calls each morning. It is here on the screen at, I believe, it's 6 a.m. And they will be on Zoom, and it also will be on the YouTube afterwards. Wednesday night meetings each week at 7.30. That will continue on our Zoom uh, meeting ID is on the screen, our uh, Margate Zoom link each week at 7.30. And our next Feeding the Homeless will be on the first Sunday, which will be May 1st. And that will be at 10 a.m. for distribution and for everyone who is coming to volunteer. We will meet here at 8 a.m. All help is requested. We do need volunteers. And uh, those that are interested, please contact Sister Plummer. And we still do have our prayer request list. The names here are on the screen. Please remember our brothers and sisters in Christ and keep everyone in prayer and pray for our sick and shut in members. And if you do have your own prayer request, you can text the number that is here on the screen. And I want to wish a happy belated birthday. We have Sister Baldio, who I believe is here. So when you do see her, help her uh, wish her a happy belated birthday, as well as Brother Chung, who had a birthday on March 28th. And then we have our birthdays from the past week. We have Abe Lavincio and Brother Hines. They had a birthday on the 3rd and the 7th. So if we see them, please do wish them a happy birthday as well. And our health nugget for the week, sleeping more may help to improve your memory. So this is a great excuse for us to get some extra rest, okay? So when we're working throughout the week, remember sleep is important. It helps with our memory. And we did start a new quarter, so we want to remind everyone to pick up the quarterlies. They are available at church for pickup, uh, so we can all follow along on our Sabbath school uh, meetings this week and every week. And we do have our women's retreat, which will be taking place February of next year, so February 2023. But I do want to make sure everyone knows and so we can get excited and start preparing for that now. And so those that are interested, you can begin making your payments uh, by using your tithe envelopes or using the app. And where it says other, please make sure to mark women's a ministry retreat. Make sure you are specifying that is the retreat that you are uh, making payments towards and that your money will go there uh, where it's supposed to be. Also, some other announcements that aren't on the screen. We will have officers training next Sabbath here at church at 3.30 p.m. So all heads of department are asked to bring their projections and budgets for the next church year. So if those who are new officers and new department heads, please remember we have officers training next Sabbath at 3.30. And then we have Sabbath school council meeting on Tuesday at 8 p.m. on the church Zoom link. So if you are a Sabbath school superintendent, teacher or secretary, this uh, announcement is for you. We will be meeting at Tuesday at 8 p.m. on Zoom. And we do have a quote here, which is on the screen. Being a Christian is more than just an instantaneous conversion. It is a daily process whereby you grow to be more and more like Christ. So that's something that we can all keep in mind throughout the Sabbath and throughout the week. 
And lastly, I want to announce that we do have AY this evening, which will be in person. So please make an effort to come out this evening at 6 p.m. We have a presentation by Sister Dawn Williamson. It's about champion, championing our fears in times of uncertainty. So please make an effort to come out. And this is all the announcements that we have for today. I hope you all have a blessed Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I just want to thank you all for being here today. I know that, you know, God commanded us to come together and to, to worship as a community. But sometimes we go visiting and sometimes things comes up and we have to be in other places. So it's nice that you are here today and you look real Lovely. Uh, for those who are on, on YouTube viewing, I'm going to uh, recommend to you that you press that like button and you subscribe so that whenever we are having anything here at our church, any service, you know, uh, you will be notified. Uh, we do have visitors here today. Are there any visitors? Okay, uh, we have a few visitors down there. Uh, would you just like to stand and say where you're from, where you're visiting from? You're visiting from Jamaica. Okay, we are glad to have you, my brother. And the other person behind, where are you visiting from, sir? From Fort Lauderdale. Thank you for visiting us today from Fort Lauderdale Church. And we, Mount Pisca SDA, thank you for being here. And, and we have uh, some, some children, we have a family here today, the Porter's family. The Porter's family is visiting from North Carolina, right? Do I get that right? They are visiting from North Carolina and, and they are uh, a part of our children ministry. They are on the, the internet like every week uh, uh, worshiping with our children and they are in town and they decide to come and, and, and to, 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 to worship with us this morning. So we are happy that you are here, the Porters. Thanks for coming. Okay. Where, where else do we have visitors? Okay. Hmm? Amen. You know, we are so happy when we have visitors from Jamaica because we know that in South Florida here, there are a lot of churches. And when they decide to come here at Margate, we just want to thank them so much. You know, you guys are like the cherry on top of that ice cream. <laughs> you know, so we ask you when, when, whenever you are in South Florida to continue to come and to, to, to visit with us. And I guarantee you that you will have a blessed Sabbath Sabbath here. At this time, uh, we're we going to have our welcome song. So sing along with us as we greet each other in Jesus' name. We are Margate. We'll welcome you today. We are, we are Margate. We we'll welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. We we'll welcome you today. We are, we are Margate. We we'll welcome you today, we'll welcome you today, today, today. We are Margate. Have a blessed day. We are. 
are my gates. We we'll welcome you today, today, today. We are my gates. We we'll welcome you today. We are my gates. We we'll welcome you today, today, today. We are my gates. Have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have our children's story. Uh... Praying for a baby. What is your favorite Bible story? In the African country of Zambia lives a mother whose favorite Bible story is Hannah. Do you remember the story of Hannah? Hannah was a loving wife who wanted more than anything to become a mother. She wanted to have a baby. But she couldn't. She and her husband waited for many years, but no baby was born. Hannah was very sad. In those days, the people of Israel traveled to worship in the tabernacle in Shiloh once a year. Hannah was especially sad during these trips. She cried and sometimes refused to eat. During one visit to Shiloh, Hannah went to the tabernacle to pray for a baby. When Eli the high priest saw her crying and praying, he told her that God would give her a baby. And God did. Hannah became the happiest of mothers when she gave birth to a boy she named Samuel. In Zambia, mother read the story of Hannah in the Bible, and she liked it very much. You see, mother also had a problem. After she got married, she gave birth to a baby boy. But then no more babies came. She and her husband waited. One year. Two years. Five years. Ten years. People started to ask questions. Why aren't you having any more babies? A friend asked. That's the way it is, mother replied. God will provide. A kind neighbor suggested mother go to the hospital for a checkup. Maybe the medical doctor can help, she said. No, that's the way it is, mother said. God will provide. Someone suggested that mother visit the witch doctor. The witch doctor can give you a secret herb, she said. Mother wanted a baby, but she knew the witch doctor could not help. She did not believe in witch doctors. She believed in the God of heaven, and she was sure that only he could give her a baby no, mother said. God will provide. The story of Hannah gave mother hope. Hannah was a praying woman who never gave up praying. Mother prayed. She prayed for 13 years. Father prayed with her. God, please give us another child, she prayed. Then one day mother noticed something was different. She was pregnant. Mother and father immediately knelt to pray. Thank you, God, they prayed. A few months later, mother gave birth to a baby boy. She and father named him Chilala, which means worthwhile in her Tonga language. In no time, mother gave birth to another boy. This child was named Shakandila, which means let it be so. Today, mother perhaps is the happiest mother in Zambia. She has three boys, and they love Jesus. God has blessed my family beyond measure, mother said. We just had to be patient. When you ask God for something good in faith, he will give you more than you could possibly desire. Mother, Marjorie Chisonga, teaches home economics and food and nutrition at Ruzanga Secondary School, located on land where U.S. missionary William Harrison Anderson established the first Adventist outpost in northern Rhodesia, now Zambia, in 1905. Mission offerings supported Anderson's work and still helped to spread the gospel through missionaries. Thank you for your mission offering.
Can you kiss your letters? Pray. Happy Sabbath. No? You sure you don't want to try again? No, no, no. Hannah, you're doing a great job. Okay. Let's eat. Let's, let's pray together. <laughs> All right. <coughs> uh, happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Hannah and I will, will pray. So I'd like to invite everyone to join us uh, for this prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this story. Thank you for answering prayers, Lord. Hannah had a prayer where she wasn't able to have a baby, but she came to you and you responded to her, Lord. So, Lord, help us to remember to, to come to you when we need things, Lord, and help us to trust in you. And, Lord, we thank you for making Hannah courageous to come up onto the stage before everyone here today. And we pray that you be with all of us for the rest of the day and beyond. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. It is time that we all can uh, participate and do our part in the service. It is time we collect today's tithe and offering. Uh, for us in the House of Deacons, will come around and they will collect the offering. For those online, you can give your offering online. We have the Margate, uh, hashtag Margate SDA for the cash app we have the adventist giving app where you can download on your devices we are in such uh, age where technology is so great so you can return your tithe and offering before you come to church as you get paid during the week, you can return your tithe and offering. You don't have to wait till Sabbath morning. You're fumbling in your purse or in your wallet to get your uh, tithe or your offering out. You don't have to worry about filling it out on the paper. It's all there. You can do it online on, your, on the Adventist Giving app. Or you can send it to our P.O. Box. Margate SDA Church PO Box 275 25753 Tamarack Florida 33320 <laughs> You can send whatever you desire if it's check or cash uh, we prefer not any changes any you know nickels and dimes but I'm just kidding I'm just kidding uh, but yes as the Lord bless you return your tithe and your offering and if you do desire to come during the week, we have also a drop box here at church where you can um, come with your tithe and your offering and you drop it off in the uh, drop box at the church. Uh, bringing all the tithes into the storehouse so that there will be meat in my house, said the Lord of hosts. Shall we all stand? Let us pray. Most righteous eternal Father, we want to give you thanks, dear Lord, for today. Thank you for blessing us with bountiful blessings, dear Lord. As we have returned a portion of what you have blessed us with, let it go to the furtherance of your cause, O oh Lord. Guide us and protect us now. Give us an outpouring blessing on this, your holy Sabbath day. Father, whatever we do and say here today, we will be mindful that all glory and honor will be given unto you. We pray and say thanks in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. Open it. 
him is number 163 at the cross. And we're singing. Alas, and did my Savior bleed? Please remain standing for a scripture reading. very pleasant Sabbath to all of you and to the many others in line. For our contemplation, today's scripture is taken from Matthew 28, verses 1 to 8. As I read in your hearing, let us each, let us keep each event and the biblical characters in our hall of memory. In the beginning, <coughs> in the beginning of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and they became as dead men. And the, the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, Come, see the place where he lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples 
that he is risen from the dead and behold he goeth before you into Galilee there shall he see him lo I have told you and they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word I pray that as we apply our hearts unto instruction and our ears to the words of this knowledge. Thank you. You know, God has a special blessing for us when we come collectively than when you stay at home. You cannot, and I repeat, you cannot receive this blessing that we are getting here this morning collectively at home. God has a special blessing for his people when they come collectively. And this morning, God has that special blessing in store for all of us. We have come to this special moment in our worship where we come with our praise and we come with our thanksgiving. Because God has been so good to us during the course of the week that when we come here on Sabbath morning, we come with gratitude and with thanksgiving and with praise for the goodness of God. Because I could have died this week. There's no guarantee that I would get up this morning away from God's grace. And the same goes for all of us. So we are extremely happy to be alive, to be numbered among the living. Because the dead cannot praise the Lord. And therefore, because we have breath, let every breath praise the Lord. Amen? You might come this morning with a burden. Uh, with a you are here, but you are here, you are not here. But you want to be here. That burden, that thing that is bugging you, that thing that is your problem. God wants to take it away this morning. And if you feel impressed to come forward, seeking that deliverance from the Lord, I invite you, to join with me here as we sing. I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. If you. Let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker.
dear Lord and Father of mankind, we thank you that we can approach your throne this morning. Nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to cross we cling. Lord, we want to thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us this week. Uh, you send your angels, dispatch your angels so many times to deliver us from the hands of the enemy. When we were, the enemy had planned to kill us, you spear us, you delivered us. We thank you, Lord, for the many provisions that you have made for us also for food, for shelter, O oh Lord, for eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to think. Lord, these are but wonderful blessings that come from you. And we pause at this moment, at this moment of worship, to bless your name. We honor you, Lord and we adore you. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that you will send your spirit and anoint us today, individually and collectively. Father, we have sinned and we have come short of your glory. We have displeased you this week and we come acknowledged in them. And we ask that you will extend your scepter of mercy towards us this morning. Blood out our sins and our transgression and cover us with your blood. We want to pray for everyone who is bowing before you tonight, this morning, those who are at home, and those who are here at your feet. We thank you for everyone. You know everyone individually here this morning as we bow before you. We pray, O Lord, that you will search our hearts and know our thoughts. And if there is any wicked way in us, we pray, o Lord, that you will lead us in the way everlasting. Amen. Grant us peace in our hearts as we worship you this morning. We are long for freedom. And so, o Father, we pray that you will be very present and be very near to us as we worship you. There are some of us here this morning that have marital problems, things not working well in the homes. I pray for your divine intervention for those who are struggling in this manner or in this area. There are Parents who are having problems with their children. Oh Lord, we pray for your divine intervention. Speak to those who are inclined to go astray. Remember our young people. They are so distracted. The devil is working 24-7 to destroy them. But we pray for them this morning in the name of Jesus that you will cover them you will strengthen them and you will deliver them this morning O Heavenly Father we want to pray for the sick among us remember Sister Dawn Brewise who has been making progress and we give you thanks. We thank you for Elder Cheddar. I just pray that you will strengthen him, O oh Lord, in these moments. 
We pray for all those who are not feeling well this morning. Just want to pray also for my wife who has a back problem at this moment. We pray that you will anoint her and give her a special healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for a special anointing on your congregation this morning. May we, O oh Heavenly Father, not leave here as we came. But we will leave here change being prepared for your kingdom. Remember the one that shall break the bread of life today. Give him that special anointing. And help him, O oh Lord, that as he deliver your word, that he too will receive that special blessing. And we believe here today as men and women destined for your kingdom. We pray in Jesus' name. I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your Happy Sabbath again, Margaret. God has sent us a messenger today. And you know God promised us that, that he will always communicate with us through his prophets, messengers. Today we have Pastor Vasco St. Basil Brown. He is a retired pastor out of California, living here in, in Florida. He has sp speak here before. During the pandemic, when most of us was probably on lockdown, he bravely came here along with his wife, and he spoke. Uh, she's not here today for you to meet her. But I guess he is with two of his family members. He has become one of my favorite speakers. And you could also hear him on the wake-up call. He's a part of the wake-up call. So if you have never heard him before, today is the perfect day for that. 
But before Pastor Brown comes to speak with us a word from God, we will listen to our younger praise team as they sing for us. Amen. Draw me close to you and never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your friend.
so the devil is giving us a moment <laughs> for us to talk about how good God is. <laughs> so I'm assuming everyone had, how was your week this week? It was it okay? Was it there you go. <laughs>
Do I have it now? There you go. <laughs> I near the, I near the frighten myself. <laughs> okay, I'll wait until it gets it down. Okay, all right. Yeah, um, I have my nephew and my niece with me. He is my nephew by blood, and she is my niece by love. I think they're married, too. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> anyway, I'm very glad to have them um, with us this morning. They live just in Plantation over there, so not very, just 11 miles from here, and I'm very glad to have them. When I was asked to speak, I did um, ask him if he would sing, because he's a very good singer, he always sings for me whenever we meet in this setting. But he said that his throat was not in the best right now. So if you ever see that face again here, make sure he sings. OK. Come prepared. <laughs> if you can't, just ask your wife to sing. OK, Pauline? OK, good, good. But I'm very glad to be here again. And thank you, Elder Lapper, for this invitation. I know that there are many, many good speakers. And still you ask me. <laughs> so I, I thank you for the invitation. And after I spoke here the last time, I spoke at the pastor's other church down there in Hollywood, and we had a very good time together. You didn't know that I speak, um, what is it like, Roman? Romanian. Romanian, you didn't know that. Uh, you didn't know that, right? <laughs> okay. We hear of what Peter did on the day of Pentecost, but the Lord allowed everyone present, whatever language they spoke before, the Lord allowed everyone to understand. Amen. And in the last days, I believe it is going to happen again. It is going to happen again in the last days. That the word of God, as a matter of fact, it is happening now. It is happening now. It may not be linguistically, but we are here speaking today, worshiping the Lord, and people could be watching anywhere. You never can tell how far this sound goes. So we um, thank the Lord for all of his blessings. I notice that the people that I'm going to be speaking to, that is those in the middle, um, most of them are not here. <laughs> so um, sometimes I will address you and you over there, but I'll be speaking to these folk here. I, when I saw the brother brought his um, prayer pad here, I remember I was in Nicaragua, and I went out on a little island, and I spent the Sabbath there. The floor of the sanctuary, oh, there was no floor. Oh, yeah, just like what Adam and Eve had. And... Uh, so when it was time to pray, I, I looked at the floor and I looked at my suit. <laughs> and I looked at the floor again and I looked at my suit again and I dropped to the floor. Amen? Amen. I didn't let a suit prevent me from worshiping God the way the others were worshiping God. And so... The, the, the flowers that they had, they just planted it on the platform. 
And it was growing. <laughs> because the entire inside was dirt. So they planted the flower and the flowers. All they had to do was to water it. This morning, I have a responsibility from the Lord to deliver a message. And it is not quite um, Easter weekend, but that is the theme of the message for today. Forget um, speaking to these folk here. Um, that's the theme of the message today. Since... I cannot be with you next week. I just can't come back next week for Easter weekend. So I'm delivering that message to you today. And I hope it's okay with you, Elder Life. And the title of the message is The Empty Tomb. Oh, sorry. I have one more relative here. And that is um, Christine Barnes. Where's Christine? She's somewhere doing something. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, she's over there. Um, I think you all know her. And I'm going to be taking her away from you very soon. Because the house we're building should finish this month. And she has an invitation. She has her room in the front. And when she's in the front... And look through her window, she can see two different streets. One going that way, one going that way. She can take any of those streets. <laughs> and she has her own bathroom too. Because it is a three bathroom house. So she'll have her own private bathroom. And then there's another bathroom to the back. Um, and... The invitation lasts for life. Amen. Or as long as she needs the place. So we just want to thank the Lord for blessing us that we could do that for Christine. She has been so faithful to the Lord. And so it is now payback time. Amen. The Lord is blessing her. The empty tomb. Jeremy wasn't a child that is considered normal. He had a terminal disease, and it both affected his body and his mind. But his parents tried to give him as normal a life as is possible. And that is what most of us as parents would normally do. You have a child, as a matter of fact, whether the child is normal or not, you strive to give that child the best life possible. And so at age 12, he was only in the second grade. He was a frustration both to the teacher and also to his fellow classmates. It was now springtime, about this time of the year, and the children were talking excitedly about Easter. They were told the story of Jesus and the idea of a new life springing forward. Their teacher, Miss Miller, gave each child a large plastic egg with this assignment. Take this home and bring it back tomorrow with something inside representing new life. Do you understand? She asked the kids. Yes, Miss Miller, we understand. All of them, that is except Jeremy, he did not respond. His eyes were trained on Miss Miller. He, he, he never looked to the right nor to the left. He kept looking in the face of Miss Miller because apparently he had an idea.
Miss Miller was wondering, did he understand? Did he, does he understand about the death of Jesus and the resurrection? Did he understand what the assignment was all about? As Miss Miller thought of calling the parents and telling them of the assignment. But in the busyness of the Easter, she forgot everything about it. And so the next morning, the kids came laughing and talking as they placed their eggs on Miss Miller's desk. It was time for Miss Miller to open the eggs. In the first egg, Miss Miller found a beautiful flower. And she said, oh yes, a flower is a sign of new life. When a plant peek through the ground, we know that spring is here. As a little girl in the first row waved her arms, that's my egg, Miss Miller. The next egg contained a plastic butterfly. Apparently that child could not have caught the butterfly, so she used a plastic butterfly. Miss Miller held it up and said, we all know what a butterfly, we all know that a butterfly changes and grows into a beauty, sorry, a caterpillar um, changes and grows into a beautiful butterfly. Yes, this is new life too. Judy smiled prou proudly. Miss Miller, that's mine. Next, the teacher found a rock with moss. She explained that moss too showed life. Billy in the back of the classroom said, my daddy helped me. Then the teacher opened that fourth egg and that egg was empty. She thought it must be Jeremy's. He obviously did not understand her instruction. Her instruction was he should find something and put in that egg that represented life. But now his egg was empty. And so because she did not want to embarrass him, she quietly set the egg aside and reached for another egg. But Jeremy spoke up. Miss Miller, aren't you going to talk about my egg? At that point, the teacher said, but Jeremy, your egg is empty. And so he responded softly, yes, Miss Miller, but Jesus' tomb was empty too. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we're glad that the tomb is empty. The cross on which you were crucified is also empty. And we thank you, Lord, for that emptiness. Now fill us with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The greatest symbol and proof of a new life is found in another than the empty tomb. And we go to Matthew chapter 28, verses 5 through 7. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from
from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Amen. Just reading that passage of scripture, uh, if we were to sit quietly and meditate, it would be adequate for a sermon today. But the Lord asked me to say a few more words about that. And so I will go on. Um, by the way, you do not need to be worried about how long I will... I thought I saw a clock somewhere, did I? You don't have to be worried about how long I'll be preaching. I promise you, I will not go a minute beyond when I'm finished. Amen. Here are three empty promises to celebrate. Number one, an empty life. He said, go quickly. Tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And so they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. And I have been thinking about that. Fear and great joy. How do these two terms come together? Can someone have fear and at the same time having great joy? Now, I, fear is a word that we all know the meaning of. But I was thinking that maybe I didn't understand what the word fear means. And so I went to the dictionary and it says it is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous. They left with great fear. And I can understand that you know, how many Jamaicans are here? Okay, how many West, in West Indians are here? Okay, hold on. Now, Jesus was crucified. Jesus was buried. Jesus was resurrected or at least the body was absent i'm not going to say here that these individuals who left with great fear and great joy i'm not going to say that they were afraid of duppy you know which would take care of the fear part but they were told he is risen. So what would they be afraid of? But they did not stop there because they also had great joy. They were glad about something happening. And I had to go to the dictionary again to see exactly what joy is. And it is a feeling of great pleasure and happiness. So we have here a mixed emotion. A mixed emotion of fear and joy. A mixed emotion of unpleasantness and pleasure. They, they knew that this wasn't ordinary and I can imagine that at that point they did not begin to remember that the Lord had said that he would be resurrected on the third day. 
I believe they did not remember that Jesus had said, destroy this temple. And in three days, I will raise it up again. I don't believe that they remembered anything of that. I believe that they did not remember anything until perhaps that night on the way to Emmaus. That after Jesus had preached to them for the whole trip to Emmaus, from wherever they started, Judea, perhaps, that he preached to them from Moses and all the prophets, everything concerning himself. That was a great Bible study. And I hope that you'll be out again um, this evening for the Bible study. Because it will help you to understand all these. In Luke chapter 24 verses 1 through 8. Now on the first day of the week very early in the morning. They and certain other women with them came to the tomb bringing the spices which they had prepared. But they found the stone already rolled away from the tomb. Because they were wondering, these ladies, they were wondering, they were all women, and they were wondering, who will roll away the stone? You know, as we think about it, the women in our lives are always the most faithful. You ladies, I've always preached and I said, if, if, I, if, I, if something is happening in my life and I need special prayer, I'm not going to ask a man to pray for me. I'm going to ask a woman. The man is going to say, oh, yes, I'll pray for you and forget it right there. Most men. Brother Lifer is different. <laughs> but the ladies, you ask a lady to, one of these old faithful ladies in the church, you ask, her to pray for you? Make sure you want prayer. Make sure you want to be remembered night and day and in between. Because that old lady, she is going to pray for you. The women are always so faithful. And here we find when Jesus was crucified, when he was buried, they came and they observed where he was buried. And on, they went away. They kept the Sabbath. That night, Saturday night, I imagine, they prepared spices. And early Sunday morning, they went to bomb and bomb the body of Jesus. So as they were going, because they knew that a great stone was rolled and placed at the entrance to this grave. And they were wondering, who will roll away the stone? Because we are all women. They weren't saying that they were weak women. But uh, I can say that maybe uh, women are not as muscular as men. You like that, ladies? You'll admit. What about you over here? All right. Well, those in front of me, you're the ones I'm preaching to, you agree with me. Thank you very much. But at least they accepted the fact that they did not have the kind of muscle. that God didn't create you to do that kind of work. He created you to be beautiful. You know, after all is said and done, if you're not beautiful, you're not going to be observed. Is that true? No. Boy, the pastor is telling lie and puppet. <laughs> you don't think that's true? All right. Fine. But God has created you with a tenacity that I don't think he has put in man. You agree on that? Okay. 
but they were there for Jesus. They observed where he was laid, and early Sunday morning, they came back to take care of business. And they wonder, who is going to roll away the stone? But here, the, the scripture is saying, but they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. Then they went in, brave women. Peter went to the grave. And he was gone. Then they went in and did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And it happened as they were greatly perplexed about this, that behold, two men stood by them in shining apparel. Then as they were afraid and bowed their faces to the ground, they knew that these were not ordinary men. They said to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Jesus showed that the way to be full is to be empty. Real fulfillment comes when we are empty of our selfish desires and make Jesus our heart's desire. I like the, where's the brother that did the Sabbath school lesson this morning? Don't say he's gone home. Where is he? I mean, I can't miss the beard. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay, that mask, I tell you. That mask makes a havoc of all of us. Yes, very well done, sir. Very good. The coming back to emptiness, going back to Eve, selfish desire. She wanted to be like, she wanted, but the, the, the Bible tells us that she was already in the image of God. She was like God. God created male and female as a composite of what God is like. But she wanted more than that. She wanted more and she lost, or let me say they, and they lost, they lost everything. So we must be emptied of our selfish desires. We should make Jesus our heart's desire. Jesus' last words on the cross was, it is finished. That means fulfillment. Everything that needed to be done on earth for our salvation, it was already done. Whatever he came to do, it was now done. And so Jesus emptied himself of divinity that we might live abundantly i don't believe it was an easy task for jesus or for god the son to empty himself of divinity now i've I entered pastoral ministry um, in the year 2000, sorry, yeah, 1976. 
I entered pastoral ministry in 1976. And I've uh, been in pastoral ministry since then, except for the years I was in school. And as a pastor, now as a lay person, I'm just like Brother Laffer, Elder Laffer, to, to always remember that I'm not a pastor, I'm a lay person in the church. I cannot speak up the way I used to speak up. I have to put the pastoral mentality aside. I'm now retired. I'm not in active pastoral ministry. And I believe that Jesus had the same problem. He had to put aside his divinity. He could not use his divinity to do anything from which he himself would benefit. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say. I may not be able to say it, but spirit, give them understanding. So Jesus stepped into humanity when humanity was at its very worst to offer to humanity his very best. Jesus emptied himself of all life to fill ours with his pure life. If you're not experiencing God's presence in your life, it may be that you're not emptied of self. Because we need to give up self to make space for God to come in. You know, there are some individuals that you know they are so full of themselves, they have no space inside for anybody else. And, and, and tell you what is bad about it, some of them come to church. Some of them are in the Seventh-day Adventist church. Some of them are in the Margate Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> Um, but Brother Laffer, they may not be here. That type doesn't come here, perhaps. We serve a God that specializes in filling emptiness. Look at the creation. There was this vast emptiness, nothingness, and God splashed the universe into an expanse of Emptiness. What a great God. And then he created the stars and he hung the stars upon nothing. And, and then he turned nothing into something, then hung that something upon nothing. What a God we serve. And so when David, when David one night looked, he, not the day that he looked over the neighbor's place, another day, I think it was a night. In Psalm 19 verses 1 through 6, he, David proclaims, the heavens declare the glory of God and the skies display his craftsmanship or his handiwork. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. That is, they make God known. They speak without a sound or a word. Their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone throughout the earth. And their words to all the worlds. That is the mighty God that we serve. 
Then we look at the incident of Jesus preaching all day long to these thousands of people that were present. And in the evening they observe or in the evening a problem came to their attention. And so four plans were offered. There was empty stomachs here. 5,000 empty stomachs. And so Jesus, um, the disciples said, let's get rid of the problem. Let us send home everybody. Jesus said, that's not it. They will faint on the way home. Because they were running on empty. I remember, I remember um, a story about uh, a lady. She had bought a used VW. You know the old box with the engine in the back instead of the engine in the front? So after she bought the car, going home, it stopped on the way. And so she called the place that she had bought it. So they came out to help her. And so she said that she just bought this car from you. And, and um, you put no engine in the car. <laughs> because she had opened the... the the front of the VW and she saw no engine. So she was fussing with them that, by the way, how did she get there? <laughs> how did she get that far? But she was fussing at them how they sold her this car and did not put an engine in the car. So the man asked, did you put gas in the car? What gas? <laughs> So, um, Jesus said, they are running on empty. If I send them home, they are going to faint on the way. Um, Philip said, okay, let's raise the money. And so, Philip went aside. I think he took his iPhone out and he started to calculate some figures here. And he observed that there, they would need 200 days wages to buy enough bread. Now, my nephew there, um, let me see if I can remember what kind of work he does. He, how would you call him? What, what do you, you, nephew, you. <laughs> he does some wonderful interior stuff that when I see it, I marvel. Where did he get that? I didn't give it to him. Where did he get that from? So, Philip figured that 200 days wages would buy enough food. But not 200 days of his wage. Maybe two days of his wage. <laughs> he's good with what he does, but he's not cheap. <laughs> so they, they just did not have the kind of money that they needed to sponsor lunch for Everyone, and by the way, Brother Laffer, the, the last time I came, the lunch was good. Um, right now, you know, my saliva is just flowing because I'm anticipating that 
something is going to happen. So they, they just didn't have the kind of cash to sponsor lunch for over 5,000 people. But I can tell you, beloved, that money was not the solution to this problem. Money is not the solution to every problem. Some people believe that their problem lies in money. Because they don't have money, they can't do this, they can't do that, they can't do the other thing. I can't return a tithe because I don't have... If you get some money, then you have money to return for tithe. You all get so quiet. I wish the other church would be as quiet as you are. But you, you, you got quiet just when you are to give your tithe and offering. You're all good and nice all morning until I reach the tithe. But money is not the solution to everything. Money cannot buy everything. Money will buy you a house, but money cannot buy you a home. Money will buy you a bed, a good bed. You know, my son, after he got married, he bought a bed. Not, not, the, not the head and the foot and the $6,000 just for the mattress portion. Part that can, you know, it's like you're in a hospital bed and it, you don't need to go on the couch to watch TV. You just press a button and it, you know, bends with you and you just sit there in bed and watch, sit up in bed and watch TV and lie down in bed and sleep. And money will buy you a good bed, but money cannot buy you a good night's sleep. Money can provide the best of medicine, but money cannot buy you good health. You notice the amount of millionaires that are just dying? Young people in, in, in the entertainment business. Have you noticed how many young people in the entertainment business are just dying? Money can provide you a beautiful worship center like this with adequate parking compared to people in Los Angeles. With nice landscaping. But money cannot buy you the power of God nor the power of the Holy Spirit. Money can provide the best education, but neither money nor education can make you wise. So money is not the solution to everything. So Andrew found a little boy. And the little boy had just enough lunch for himself. And... Those of you from Johnny Cake country understand what I believe it's just a few Johnny Cakes that he had. <laughs> or some call it what, Fred Jack? <laughs> they, they don't know what it, those who call it Fred Jack don't know what they're talking about. What do you call it? Dumpling. Dump, fried dumplings. You mean fried dumpling like what my sister, his mother make? They're good. With some saltfish? Okay. All right. So now that we leave the tithe and offering, you're ready to talk. <laughs> oh, um, for the information of somebody, I have some... I brought down some fritters. Oh, something is wrong with your sinus? Okay. <laughs> they love fritters. 
So I just brought down some for me. They found a little boy. He had a few dumplings. A few fried, you said fried dumplings? Yeah. He had a few fried dumplings. And so Andrew took it from him. I guess he thought that, oh, Andrew will either eat it himself or he will give it to the master and the master will eat the, his little fried dumplings and the fish. But at least Andrew was now traveling in the right direction. Let me just hasten here. The solution was with Jesus, though. So Andrew gave him the little boy's lunch. And he demonstrated that little becomes much in the yes in the master's hand remember John chapter 2 at the wedding feast a village event where the whole community came out there was a festive mood until the unthinkable happened and the unthinkable was they ran out of wine the, the, the wine pitchers were now empty. And Jesus said, after his mother had come to him, he told her, Mom, my hour has not yet come. But when his hour came, he did what was supposed to be done. He said, fill the water pots with water. And Jesus walked away. Jesus did not even stand around to see the miracle that was about to happen in those empty water pots. He said, fill the water pots with water, and he left. And then they found him, and he said, Master, the water pots are now full. What should we do next? Jesus said, Get some of that in a cup and take it to the master of the ceremony. The master of the ceremony tasted this wine and he said, these people don't know how to arrange stuff because they, they gave away the, they gave the, the wine that was inferior first and they now leave the best wine for the last. Instead, they should have flipped it around Give the best wine first, and when people begin to be a little, uh, when they begin to lose their balance, then you give them the wine that they got at first. But the Lord allowed them to scramble around first for a while before he gave them the solution. He allowed them to feel their inadequacy and their emptiness before he filled them with whatever they needed to be filled with. He waited until they ran out of all options before he gave them his option, the good option, the final option. Yes, beloved. The, the joy of the Lord is ever new and everlasting, satisfying. Because the joy that this world offers is inferior. It does not last. Preach it, brother. But the joy of the Lord is ever new. It is everlastingly satisfying. The joy of the Lord, it is my strength in my dark and weakest hour. And when you're down and feeling low, the joy of the Lord, it overflows. So we lift our hands and say, thank you, God, for filling our emptiness. At first, the world offers you its best until you are hooked. Then it's all downhill from there. And so the best day you'll ever spend in sin will be the first day. Thereafter, it's never as good. Proverbs 
20 verse 7 it tells us bread of deceit is sweet to a man but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel that's a terrible experience Jesus gives a miraculous joy that never ends truly every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before the longer I serve him so Jesus took the water pots that were for common use and he made them useful for something deeper something more satisfying he created something fulfilling and he used emptiness to do it when we need to we need to be emptied of self and all forms of sin selfishness is one of man's most destructive attitude and behavior selfishness produces strife it produces hatred it produces malice selfishness causes more divorce than any other attitude or behavior if you take any couple that is separated or divorced and you'll find at the center there is what yes selfishness it causes more divorce than any other let me hasten along here we need to be emptied of selfishness strife hatred malice repentance isn't perfection but a turning from sin and heading in the right direction God's direction we need to be emptied of substitutes Often we try to substitute service for surrender and work for worship. Remember Martha and Mary? When Martha drops her to-do list and falls at the feet of Jesus, then she begins to do service for Jesus. Serving is good and it is the right thing to do, but do not let yourself get so busy doing things for Jesus that you neglect spending time with Jesus. Amen. Accept no substitute for the infilling of the Spirit. Do not fill yourself up with drugs legal or illegal because some people believe that if the drugs is legal it is okay no it is not okay don't take any more drugs than you need to take some people go to the doctor they needed uh, a pain reliever and so the doctor gives them some very strong medication and they take it to the last drop. They don't realize that when they feel the pain less, don't take it. I remember <coughs> recently I went to the doctor, was having a dental problem, went to the doctor and surprisingly did some extractions and gave me some medication I went to the pharmacy to pick up some medication they were just um, I forget the what they were now but it was um, 600 milligrams of um, not Motrin that next one ibuprofen yes 600 milligrams of ibuprofen so I got that the very day because I was in pain I took one or two, I think I took three. And the pain 
subsided, I stopped taking it. The next thing on my phone um, said that the, the pharmacy sent a message um, to pick up medication. So I went to the pharmacy, was wondering, why do I need to pick up medication? So I went, they said um, they have some pain killer, some narcotic, that's what the lady said, some narcotic. I said, I don't need it. I said, I don't need it. I'm not in pain. Or at least I'm not in that much pain to need stronger than 600 milligrams of ibuprofen. If you don't have to take it, beloved, please don't take it. You're only doing yourself harm. Movies. Do not fill yourself up with movies. Um, I was doing... Wednesday evening prayer meeting, Wednesday passed, and someone mentioned about the fact that in all modern movies, about half the characters are gay. I said, you don't have to watch it. You don't have to watch it. Amen? Amen. Where's my dumpling group? You don't have to watch it. Amen? Amen? You don't have to watch it. If you are being entertained by people in sin, you are part of the sin. And you are as guilty for being entertained by them as they are for doing what they do. I'll just move on. Music. If you fill yourself up with music, relationships, we should fill ourselves with nothing less than Jesus. Empty ourselves at the foot of the cross. Man, I'm so glad that I'm not seeing any clock. Good. Okay. You know, recently I heard one pastor said that there is one thing that you cannot steal in church while service is going on, they'll, they're, everybody's going to miss it. If, he said you can steal the organ while the preacher is preaching. You can steal the organ and nobody hardly would miss the organ. You can steal the piano. All this here, park your truck out there, come take it out while service is going on. Everybody is fine because nobody knows why they're doing it. But he said, touch that clock. <laughs> he said, touch that clock and everybody's eye is on you. Why is it? Okay. When you empty yourself of everything that should not be in you, Jesus will be able to fill you up. The next is going to be short. There was an empty cross. We all know about it. Three crosses, Jesus in the middle, that empty cross that evening. Jesus isn't on the cross of Calvary anymore. Amen? The cross is empty, and yet it is full of God's promises. The empty cross tells us, tells me that I can be forgiven of all of my sins. The cross was a very cruel place of death. The, the cross, the, the death of the cross was, you know, what goes on in Ukraine, and especially what we heard um, that just happen in the city of, anybody remember that it's a four letter word, four, not Kiev. anybody remember? Just this week that the Russians left that area and when the Ukrainians went in, they saw the death and destruction, p dead people on the street and everything, tortured people. I'm not telling you to watch television, but you can find the news on the internet. 
Yeah, the cross is empty, but it is full of God's promises. The empty cross tells me that I can be forgiven of my sins. Amen. The, it was so cruel. And it was reserved for the worst criminals. The Jewish leaders recommended crucifixion for Jesus because they knew it was a terrible death. Crucify him, crucify him, let him be crucified, they shouted, showing contempt for the very Messiah that they were waiting to see. He was beaten, he was broken, he was bruised. He took it all on himself for you and for me. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 3 through 7 tells us he is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And yet all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. But the angel of the Lord said, answered and said to the women, do not be afraid. Matthew 28, 5, 6. For I know you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here he is risen. You know, when I could not go up to where Jesus was, he came down to my level. Oh, stop. Stop picking in my notes. I thank you anyway. That's my dumpling corner. So he came down to my level that he could bring me up to his level. The empty cross tells me that I can be free from my past. Who here today doesn't want to be freed from their past? Anybody? Doesn't all of us have some little past that we don't want to see again ever? And the empty cross tells me that I can be freed from my past. It's empty of the body of Jesus, but full of God's promises, full of hope for you and for me. The promise of the empty cross is that you and me, we stand forgiven. And then the last one is not going to be as long as the first one. An empty tomb. With the empty tomb, Jesus showed that the way to live is to die. Again, back to Matthew 28, 8 through 10. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and joy, and they ran to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them and said, Rejoice! So they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Now, this here tells us something. Remember that earlier the morning when Mary went to the tomb and she was weeping and she saw the supposedly gardener and um, she turned to the gardener and said, um, if you have taken away his body, tell me where you have um, placed it and I will go and find him. And then Jesus said, Mary. And she was so happy, she was about to hug him. And Jesus said, no, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended to my father and your father have not yet ascended to my God and your God. But here we find they were not able to hug him. That means Jesus, after his crucifixion, sorry, after his resurrection, Jesus went to heaven to get approval for what he had done. And he came back to the scene. We're told that criminals, when they do something bad, terrible, that 
they come back to the scene. So the authorities watch to see who's coming back. They are at the funeral service of the person they killed. They just want to see how everybody reacts. Jesus came back to the scene. Do not be afraid and go and tell my brethren. That's what Jesus said now. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee and there they will see me. And remember the story of <clears throat> the brethren, two brothers, two um, followers of Jesus going on the road of Emmaus and they were talking about what had happened for the weekend and this man came up walking beside them and he asked, what manner of conversation are you having? And he said, you, you haven't heard what happened this weekend? Where have you been? You have not heard what happened this weekend? How that the man that we thought was going to be the Messiah, they took him and they killed him. They killed him on the cross. Oh, Jesus said, oh, foolish ones and slow to heart to hear, slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all scriptures the things concerning himself. Beloved, without the empty tomb, there is no savior. Without the empty tomb, there is no salvation for you and for me. Without the empty tomb, there is no hope, absolutely no hope, no surety of salvation. You shall not hold him any longer, O tomb. Death is strong, but life is stronger. Stronger than darkness is the light. Stronger than wrong is the right. Faith and hope triumphantly say the tomb of Jesus stands empty today. While the patient earth lies waiting till the morning shall be breaking, shuddering beneath the burden, dread of her master, cold and dead, hark the hears. How she hears the angels say, Christ will rise on Easter day. And when sunrise smites the mountains, pouring light from heavenly fountains, then the earth blooms out to greet once again the blessed feet. And her countless voices say, Christ is risen today. Here are five facts, and I'm going to be closing one of these days. Here are five empty facts that we need to consider. One, the Roman seal was broken. That means something happened. Somehow the grave was open. The stone was rolled away which indicates either someone went in or someone went out. The grave clothes were left behind. That means the body that was in those grave clothes were not there. Only the grave clothes were there. The guards were paid to keep silent. That means the guards must have seen something happen. Yes, they did. Because when they saw something happen, when the angel came to call Jesus. Now remember, the angel did not resurrect Jesus. The angel, an angel could not resurrect Jesus. There was life in himself. 
But the angel came and told him, he said, Jesus, your father calls you. And Jesus, with life that is already in himself, Jesus rose and stood up. And he took off the grave clothes that he was placed in. And we are told that it was neatly folded up and placed aside. And Jesus walked out and those soldiers that were guarding, they saw what happened. They saw the angel when he came and when the, the, the power of the angel touched the earth, that the earth trembled at the resurrection of Jesus. And I imagine that while they, they said that they, fought, they fell as dead men on the ground, I imagine while they were lying on the ground face down, they must have looked under their arm to see what was happening in the, in the tomb. And perhaps they saw everything that happened because they were the only eyewitnesses. And they went back and told Pilate. But when the Jewish people came and spoke with Pilate, Pilate already knew everything that, that had happened. The guards were paid to keep silent. And Jesus was seen by Mary. For in the fact of the empty tomb is the truth of the resurrection of Jesus and the promise to every Christian that we too will be resurrected to eternal life. The world gives us promises full of emptiness, but God gives us emptiness full of promises. I thank God that the cross is empty. I thank God that the tomb of Jesus is empty. Now, beloved, it is your responsibility to empty yourselves of self and to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior of sin. Father, today we just want to thank you for all of your love for coming to earth to die on our behalf. We give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you all the honor, the glory. We pray, Lord, that we will be willing to empty ourselves and to accept you into our hearts so that when you come, we can go home with you. Thank you again, Lord, for this experience. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank Pastor Brown for his message. At this time, we'll have our closing hymn, number 184, Jesus Paid It All. Please stand with us as we conclude our Sabbath service for this morning. 184. Grimson.
And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. You 
our God alone from before time began. You are on your throne. You are God alone. And right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne. You are God alone. You're unchangeable. Before time began, you are on your throne, you are God alone, and right now, in the good times and bad, you are on your throne, you are God alone. Good times and